I'm going to use the same problem about squares on a chessboard for the next two methods. They are using manipulatives and looking for patterns. Okay, so I'm kind of already doing number seven throughout the, pr the problem when I did methods five and six. I have a picture of a chessboard, and then I was creating these little sub pictures of a chessboard. So if you have this problem on your computer and you're there at home and you're just looking at it and staring at it and trying to count, that might be difficult. It might be better to have a printed out version of the chessboard or various size chessboards. If you have those pieces of paper, you can literally count them with your pen or you can move them around. If you have a real chessboard or checkerboard at your house, you could pull that chess or checkerboard out, put it down on the table and actually count it that way. That's very, very useful in the classroom as well for children to have those manipulatives um, on any problem that they might be solving. Now, this problem, as you can tell, is not your average elementary school problem, but it interestingly enough is a problem that you can attack at a lot of different age levels. It's because it doesn't involve complex mathematics so much as it's very tricky to figure out how to count them. And so it can be a fun problem. So that's kind of using manipulatives. Looking for patterns, I, I, I want to encourage you to go back and think about what we did when we wrote these out. Like, what were we actually doing? Well, we were counting the small squares, right? And then we were counting the next biggest. So the small squares were growing um, one and then four and then nine and then 16. And you want to really examine those numbers and say like, well, what are the patterns there? Because then the numbers that followed after this were also following in the same pattern. And so how, how can I think about those numbers? One, four, nine, and 16. Well, there's a couple of things to notice, a couple of patterns to notice. One is that since these are squares, those are square numbers. The square numbers themselves are numbers generated by all of the squares. And so I'm just going to briefly list those out, right? Square numbers. We have one squared, we have two squared, we have three squared, we have four squared, we have five squared, and so on, right? What are those? One times one is one, two times two is four, three times three is nine, four times four is 16, and 25. This is a pretty common pattern, and you can see that pattern playing itself out in this in more than one way. <clears throat> if a student doesn't notice that, it's perfectly okay because there's other patterns to notice. For example, a student might notice that I had one, and then when I went to four, that was actually three more. I could add three to get there. And then I went to nine, right? And that's adding five more. And then I went to 16, and that's adding seven more. And you might notice a pattern plus three, plus five, plus seven. And you could probably think in your head, hmm, what's going on there? Well, three, five, seven, that looks like I'm counting by odds. So probably on the next one would be the next odd number plus nine. And in fact, it is true. If you think about 16 and you add nine more, it will take you to 25. So you can oftentimes find a lot of patterns that exist within a problem. So using manipulatives, think about something you can touch, you can move, looking for patterns. A lot of times you're examining either a picture pattern as you're seeing or a number pattern. So you just gotta keep your feelers out there with these kinds of strategies.